Hi, this is Trevor Sullivan, a Microsoft MVP for Windows PowerShell. Today is March 25th, 2016, and I'm here at the Microsoft Technology Center in New York City at Times Square, and we're here for IT Pro Conference in New York City. There's a bunch of different sessions going on here with both PowerShell MVPs and other industry experts who are talking about Microsoft Azure Cloud, PowerShell, SharePoint, Windows Server, and a variety of other topics. One of the topics that's been really popular at this conference has been the Visual Studio Code Editor, so I wanted to introduce a few of the cool features about it. One of the great capabilities of Visual Studio Code is the ability to open a folder as a project. To do that, we can hit the Command B button to open the sidebar, and then we'll navigate over to the Explorer. We can simply click on Open Folder, and then choose a folder to open. We'll see a list of the files and folders that make up that project on the left-hand side under the Explorer. When you open up a file, it appears in the Working Files section, and when you're finished working on a file, you can use the command palette to close it. One of the other great things about Visual Studio Code is the prevalence of keyboard shortcuts. As you grow more familiar with the keyboard shortcuts, you'll become much more proficient at using the tool. When you're done working with a file, all we have to do is open the command palette and search for close, and then we can simply choose close file. But as you can see, we can easily learn the keyboard shortcuts by simply looking at the commands that are in the command palette. So we'll go ahead and hit command K and then W, which is a two key chord that allows us to close the currently open file. So as you can see on the bottom left there, it says command K was pressed, waiting for the second key. So if we hit W, that's the second key of the chord, and it closes the working file. We also have the ability to search through our code, and we also have Git integration, which allows us to create a Git repository and then make changes to the Visual Studio Code Editor. One of the other great features of Visual Studio Code is the ability to change themes. If you hit F1 to open the command palette, you can simply type theme, and as you can see, we get the preferences color theme command, and if we hit enter to select that command, we now have a variety of different themes that we can rapidly switch between. This gives you plenty of different options to alternate between as you're authoring your code. Another great feature of Visual Studio Code is the ability to add custom code snippets. If we go back to our command palette by hitting F1 and search for snippets, we can then search for a specific language such as JSON and we can go ahead and add in our own custom snippets here. So if I were to create a new JSON file, I'll go to the command palette and hit uh, change language mode, and then I'll change the language mode to JSON, and if I simply hit control space to invoke IntelliSense, you can see that I have a snippet that allows me to insert an Azure Resource Manager JSON template code snippet directly into my file. So now this helps me rapidly get started building a brand new ARM JSON template. Visual Studio Code also offers a rich marketplace that has themes and extensions that you can install to extend the capabilities of Visual Studio Code. If you hit F1 to go to the command palette, a common theme as you can see, go ahead and just type ext, short for extension, and then choose the install extension command. At this point, Visual Studio Code automatically fills out the ext install command, and then we can simply search for the extension or theme that we want. In this case, I'm searching for resource manager tools, so I can simply type part of the extension name, and it'll show up in the list here. Now, I already have it installed, but if you don't, you can simply hit enter, and it will install it for you. After a quick restart of Visual Studio Code, that extension will now be available to you. Another cool feature of Visual Studio Code is an extension that allows us to author PowerShell code. Now, because I'm running on Mac, I can't actually execute the PowerShell code locally. However, I do get syntax highlighting. So let's go ahead and type ext install and then search for PowerShell. I already have this installed, so we'll just go ahead and hit escape and we'll create a new PowerShell file. So I've created a new file by hitting Command N and I'm going to change the language mode over to PowerShell. So now I can see that the editor is in PowerShell mode down here at the bottom right, and I can go ahead and start writing commands. So I'm going to run the get process command, and then add the name parameter, and specify the system process. 
As you can see, I've got syntax highlighting here for the command name, as well as the parameter name and the parameter value that's being passed in. If I create a variable, you can see that the variable is also syntax highlighted as well. So let's go ahead and just put some additional white space in here, and let's go ahead and change the theme. You can see that as we change the theme, our syntax highlighting is getting updated. So you can use these themes to help give some variety to your software development experience. Thanks for watching this brief introduction to Visual Studio Code. I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time.